Hello, Assalamualaikum. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today I will uh, explain the chapter 6 for FIN 542 International Financial Management, uh, which is the parity conditions and currency forecasting techniques. Okay, um, basically for this topic, for this chapter, we will cover the parity conditions, uh, the law of one price and arbitrage, and also we have uh, we will cover the four theories, uh, which is the um, Fisher effect theory. Uh, the second one will be international Fisher effect theory, which is the extended model from the Fisher effect theory, and the third one would be the Purchasing power parity theory and the last one is the interest rate parity theory. So uh, maybe I will I will split uh, this chapter into two videos hopefully and um, and we will cover all the chapter uh, in the chapter six. Okay, first of all what is the parity conditions and currency for forecasting techniques from the word forecasting so here uh, we will forecast the spot rate okay how the how these four theories help traders to forecast the future spot rate okay okay as uh, as i told before this chapter focuses on parity theories and how these theories can help traders to forecast the future spot rate. Before that, let us start with one question. Why is it necessary for firms to attempt to forecast exchange rate? Yes, so there are uh, actually exchange rate forecasts uh, are necessary to evaluate the foreign denominated cash flows involved in international transactions such as import as part of any um, investment abroad. Okay, thus exchange rate forecasting is very important to evaluate the benefits and risks attached to the international business environment. Okay, before that, uh, let's look at why. The reason why we need to uh, or the companies or the traders need to forecast the exchange rate. The first one is, okay, companies involved in international activities are concerned about the uncertainty related to the expected value of short-term commitments denominated in foreign currencies. As for example, if Malaysia purchases computer hardware from United States and agree to make payment in six months times, so here, Malaysia is actually exposed to the exchange rate risk since it doesn't know the exact number of Malaysia ringgit needed to pay for the merchandise. Same goes to the uh, to United States. If USA firms um, buy goods from Malaysia with payment to be made in six in three months, the firm cannot determine how much USD are needed to buy Malaysia ringgit in order to pay for the goods imported. That's why. That is important for the companies, those involved in the import and export, to know the uh, future spot rate. Uh, so they will know how much they will pay or how much they will uh, get the, the money in uh, future currency rate. Okay. And the second one, why we need, why necessary for firms to know to, or to forecast the exchange rate. The second one would be, international companies are also concerned about an uncertainty of its investment decision, both long-term and short-term. As I told before, uh, every business environment or every transaction that involves with import, export, and also investment, we have to know the, uh, the, the, the future or we have to forecast the exchange rate. 
okay one of the methods to generate income is through investment of course investment abroad for example Malaysia invests in China in Japan or in US so so when one firms invest internationally the future income earned from these investment is in foreign currency of course of the country invested and firm doesn't know the future Malaysia ringgit value of the earnings since exchange rate will appreciate and depreciate over time okay that's why um, companies will concern about the uh, the the, the uh, to, to focus the exchange rate the companies that need to do financing abroad are concerned about the uncertainty of its financing decision Okay, apart from getting its financing from its home country, a firm can also get it externally from a foreign country. As we have learned, the movement of interest rate of one country will either strengthen or weaken its currency value. Okay, strengthen or weaken its currency value. Okay, that's the, the, uh, you have to recall the concept of how to uh, strengthen or weaken its currency value. If the interest rate in the foreign country increases, this will weaken the foreign currency value. This scenario will make the firm needs to pay more the financing made in the foreign country. Okay, so uh, that's among the reason why uh, it is necessary for the firms to uh, to forecast the exchange rate. Okay, because of uh, the transactions of import and export. Uh, for investment purpose and also to manage their financing uh, decisions okay therefore forecasting the future currency is important in helping companies to make better decisions on purchases and sales investment and also financing these three major um, activities with uh, other countries Okay, let's look at the parity con conditions or the law of one price and arbitrage. Okay, parity conditions, keadaan uh, to keadaan untuk menyamakan. Okay, and then law of one price, maksudnya uh, hukum untuk satu harga. Okay, law of one price and arbitrage. What is the parity condition? Parity conditions exist when the same or equivalent things can be transacted at the same price across different places and therefore deprive the arbitrages from making any riskless profit okay that is the parity condition where the same thing can be uh, purchased or can be sold at the same price across different places uh, if you buy the things from Malaysia or you buy that things also in US that will be a same price okay so the arbitrages will not make the profit because the same price there is no uh, there is no more or less so they cannot make profit from these conditions okay so from the uh, for the law of one price Okay, the following assumptions are made. Uh, the first one, the number one is the product must be identical. Okay, product or service must be identical, can be sold in two different countries. Okay, M must be the same product. Okay, identical product. The second one is no restrictions take place on the sale of the product or service. The third one is equal transport costs are incurred and the last one price of the product and service should be similar in both countries okay so these four assumptions must be made in order to uh, in order to, to uh, for the law of one price in theory can be uh, can be done but in reality uh, Actually, there is no identical product and the transportation cost must be actually it's not equal uh, because of the difference 
uh, of the dist distance uh, between countries. So uh, the transportation doesn't equal. And the price of product should be similar, but in real life, it's different price, okay, in other countries. If the two markets are in two different countries, the product's price may be stated in different currency terms, but the price of the product should still be the same, even though we use or we uh, we use in the different currency, but the value of the uh, or the price of the product itself actually same. Comparison of price would be only require a conversion from one currency to the other. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, let's look at the example. Okay, for example, the current exchange rate uh, for ringgit, okay, Malaysia ringgit for and 20 cent per one US dollar. Let's say the value, the max value mills in Malaysia. Okay, for example, it costs you uh, around 17 ringgit per mill. Okay, this one, max value mills. Okay, for example, max value mills, if you buy this, this mill in Malaysia, it costs you 17 ringgit. Okay, if you are in USA right now, based on the exchange rate today, it is equal to US dollar 0 0.2381 per Malaysia ringgit. How to get this? You just convert 1 over uh, 4.2. So you will get 0 0.2381. Okay, actually it is uh, equals this one per US dollar and this one is per Malaysia ringgit. Okay, so uh, with the this rate, the cost of the meal in USA should be 17 ringgit. We convert to the to US dollar. It costs you four dollar and five cent per meal. Okay, so meaning you can buy the same meal at the same price with different currency. In Malaysia, it costs you seventeen ringgit, and in US, it costs you four four dollar four dollar and five cent which is equal, okay, in both countries, in US and also in Malaysia. So that this, and uh, that is the law of one price, okay, the same price with different currency. Actually, it is the same price. In Malaysia, 7 ringgit, in US, only $4. When you convert to Malaysia ringgit, you will get 7 ringgit. And if you convert 7 ringgit to US dollar, it costs you $4.05, okay. That is one price. I hope you understand with this the uh, concept of law of one price. But if all the above mentioned assumptions are violated, then arbitrage opportunity exists. If the law of one price, arbitrage cannot make the profit. But if these assumptions, four assumptions, identical product, the same price, no transportation, equal the transportation cost. All those assumptions are violated, then arbitrage opportunity, opportunity exists. Okay, now theories underlying the parity conditions. There are four actually theories. The first one is Fisher effect theory. The second one is the International Fisher Effect Theory. The third one is Purchasing Power Theory. And the last one, Interest Rate Parity Theory. These theory are the, uh, to, to, is, are the keys, uh, international parity relationship, and also the technique used in forecasting the spot rate. Okay, the forecasting the future spot rate. Okay, let's look at one by one. The first one, Fisher effect theory. Okay, the Fisher effect is an economic theory created by an economist named Irving Fisher that describes the relationship between inflation and both real and nominal 
interest rate. Okay. According to Fisher, okay, Erwin Fisher, the nominal interest rate we denote as I in each country should be equal to the investor real rate of return. Okay, we denote as R real rate of return plus the expected rate of inflation. This is capital I. Okay, so according to Fisher, interest rate, okay, interest rate I equals to real rate of return plus uh, capital I. Okay, this one is capital I, expected inflation rate. Okay, R is real rate of return or investors' real interest rate. So, interest rate will, uh, will convert to return. Uh, so, you have to remember I equals to R plus capital I. Okay. To understand this Fisher effect theory, I, I give you one example, one simple example. One simple situation. Suppose you borrow money from your sister. How much? Make sure you get 100. And she charges you 10% on the borrowed money for a year of borrowing. Okay, You borrow for one year and she charge you 10%. Okay, the interest rate. After a year, she will get 100 ringgit plus interest rate which is 10 ringgit okay 10 percent out of 100 will be rm10 so you will pay to your sister 110 measuring it let's say after one year inflation increased by 10 percent as well okay if previously your sister can buy her cosmetic at 100 Malaysia 100 ringgit due to inflation she needs to pay the same cosmetic and this the same cosmetic she need to pay rm 110 ringgit because of inflation so borrowing her uh, her borrowing okay the borrowing earns her nothing okay she charge you 10 percent so she will get back 110 and then when because of inflation uh, she need to pay 110 for for her cosmetic therefore in order for her to gain her real return she must charge a nominal interest rate i which is r plus capital i okay so 10 should be 10 percent plus inflation 10 percent for example so she will get the uh, her uh, she will get her earnings from your from the borrowing. For instance, her real interest rate now is five percent. Considering the expected inflation of ten percent, now her nominal rate, nominal rate is five percent plus ten percent, could be fifteen percent. So supposedly, she charge you fifteen percent. Okay, now you are given okay this one there are two countries over there malaysia and singapore okay we have nominal interest rate 10 percent for malaysia and singapore 15 percent expected inflation for both country uh, malaysia seven percent and uh, for singapore 12 percent the spot rate we denote as e0 okay spot rate is two ringgit 2.99 Malaysia ringgit per Singapore dollar and one year is 2. One year forward rate 2.8405 per Singapore dollar. Okay, according to FE theory, interest rate equals to um, real interest rate plus in, uh, expected inflation. So for Malaysia, I itself is 10%. So R, we don't have the, the information of R and the expected inflation is 7%. Meaning that the real interest rate or real of real rate of return is 10% minus 7%, which is 3% for Malaysia. And for Singapore, uh, is 15% equals to 
real rate of return plus 12%, which is in, uh, expected inflation. So the real rate of return is also 3%. Meaning that the result imply that both countries should have the same real rate of return that is 3%. Okay, let's go back to the parity condition. If there is no government intervention, we can say that the difference in nominal interest rate of two countries will approximately be equal to the anticipated inflation rate differentials of both countries. Okay, let's calculate the, uh, the, the, the difference. Here, to, to get, uh, to, to calculate, the difference of uh, the, the difference of inflation expected inflation and also in difference nominal i and the interest rate nominal interest rate at home country minus the interest rate at foreign country so here malaysia ringgit would be home country and singapore would be foreign country so here 10 percent minus 15 percent you will get negative five percent and for the difference of the expected inflation, inflation at home currency minus inflation at foreign currency, 7 minus 12%, it is negative 5, similar. So here, this would be the parity conditions. Okay, no government intervention, the difference of I of two countries equal to difference uh, in inflation rate for both countries. Fisher also states that currencies with higher rate of inflation should have higher interest rate, while those with lower inflation rate will have lower interest rate. So the relationship um, between inflation and interest rate they are positively correlated between inflation and also interest rate. So that is the Fisher effect theory. If at any point of time, the real interest rate at home currency more than interest rate at foreign currency, then there will be a disequilibrium. And therefore, there exists capital flow from lower expected real rate of return to those of higher expected real, real uh, expected real rate of return. Let's say Malaysia's real rate is five percent, while Singapore is three percent. Then investors will invest in Malaysia rather than investing in Singapore because the real rate is higher. Okay, in Malaysia. So the real rate higher in Malaysia, investor will choose to invest in Malaysia rather than in Singapore. That's all for Fisher effect theory. And the second one would be international Fisher effect theory. Okay, the international Fisher effect theory uh, is an exchange rate model that extends the standard Fisher effect and is used in forex tra trading and also an analysis. So for this model to work in its purest form, it is assumed that the risk-free aspects of capital must be allowed to free float between nations that comprise a particular currency pair. Under this theory, Fisher attempts to relate interest rate with future spot rate. Before that, uh, before uh, the, the, for the for Fisher effect theory, there is no uh, spot rate, future spot rate, and this theory we extend, Fisher extend more and relate the interest rate with the future spot rate. So IFE, International Fisher Effect theory states that the differences of interest rate between two countries' currencies can be an unbiased predictor of the future change in the spot rate. Okay. The difference of interest rate between two countries can be unbiased predictor of the future 
change in the spot rate. Okay, how it, uh, let's look how it works. This relationship can be modeled into the following equation. Okay, so the, the equation is 1 plus interest, nominal interest rate, I, at home currency, over 1 plus interest rate at foreign currency, at the time T is the time period, equals to expected future, uh, expected future spot rate, expected future rate and uh, over spot rate of foreign currencies in home currencies. Okay, this is the indicator for the equation. Okay, let's look at the example. By using the same model and also the same example, we can use it to forecast the future spot rate. So, again, Nominate interest rate for Malaysia 10%, Singapore 15%, the inflation rate for Malaysia 7% and Singapore 12%. So let's uh, substitute this information into the formula. Okay, to find the future spot rate, to find the ET. Okay, to find the ET equals to I plus 1 plus IHC, 1 plus 10%, 0 0.1 divided by 1.15 i is 0 0.15 so 1 1.15 times that the the spot rate spot rate here is 2.99 per singapore dollar so after you calculate you will get the measuring it 2.8600 so we look at here the feature the aspect uh, spot rate is actually the, the, the Malaysia ringgit appreciate okay from 2.99 to 2.86 the answer above indicates that since Singapore dollar has a higher interest rate okay the higher interest rate relative to Malaysia ringgit this one is higher therefore it is expected Malaysia ringgit will appreciate and of course, Singapore dollar will depreciate again. Okay, measuring it will appreciate again Singapore dollar in a year's time at 2.86. Okay, the spot rate 2.99 after one year because of the interest rate in Singapore is higher than Malaysia. So, measuring it will appreciate and the Singapore dollar will depreciate. So we can conclude this country or currency with higher interest rate will depreciate in value while the country or currency with lower interest rate will appreciate in value. How much would the interest rate of Malaysia be if the future spot rate is 2.75? Okay, the twist gate, uh, the question uh, before this, uh, they asked about the future spot rate. And now for this question, they give the future spot rate, but they want to, uh, uh, they, they ask you what is interest rate of Malaysia should be if the future spot rate is 2.75. So uh, logically, the interest rate could be lower than 10%, maybe, okay, because the, the future spot rate is uh, the, the measure ringgit appreciate here or the singapore dollar uh, interest rate uh, sorry the, the the interest rate in singapore maybe will increase okay so here let's uh, let's substitute the information into the formula now we want to find this one i at home currency so et we have 2.75 e0 2.99 and in singapore 15 percent so you calculate the the value 2.75 divided by 2.99 times 1.15 so you will get 5.76 okay i told you the 
interest rate must be lower than must be lower than 10%. Before this, the interest rate is 10%. And the uh, currency, the future spot rate is 2.86. If the future spot rate is 2.75, so we know we can predict that the interest rate in Malaysia must be less than 10%, okay, which is 5.76%. Okay, so that's all. Thank you and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.